Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. This is part 10 of my video lecture series on the book, The Painter's Secret Geometry. And today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm not going to analyze a painting, but I want to show the artist how versatile the 14 line armature is. As an artist, you're always working within the limitations of the 14 line grid, but you're not limited by that. And Juliet Aristides does talk about that. I believe it's in classical painting atelier. And she mentions that within the boundaries of the grid, you can create an endless amount of variety. And what I'm going to demonstrate today is how the artist can create additional grids from the basic 14 line armature. And if you watched any of my videos before, you should understand how this grid is created. I'm not going to recreate it today because I've done so many videos showing that. So what you see on my screen is the basic 14 line armature. The first thing I'm going to show is how the rule of thirds is derived from that. So let me get started. The rule of thirds, which pretty much every artist is familiar with, is derived from the 14 line grid. And I'm drawing this red line vertical here where these series of diagonal lines intersect. This is a one third division. And then if I come across here on this side with the same intersection of diagonal lines, I can drop a vertical there. And then if I just drop two horizontal lines where those verticals meet those diagonal lines, this is going to give me a rule of thirds grid. So for all the artists out there that are familiar with the rule of thirds, which is pretty much everybody on the planet, that is how you get a rule of thirds grid. All right, so let me eliminate these lines. All right, so what I'm going to demonstrate now is how you can drop additional diagonal lines from intersecting points within this starting point, the 14 line grid. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw two diagonal lines that overlap these diagonal lines right here. And what I can do, I can drive verticals from side to side on this rectangle through intersecting diagonal line points to drop additional lines. And let me show you what I mean by that. If I drive a vertical approximately, I believe it's right here where these two diagonal lines intersect. And then I do that on the other side right here. I can now drop a diagonal line right here, starting at this point, then coming across here, going to the top of that. And then I can do the same thing on this vertical that I just drew. And like I said, you don't have to worry about getting this. I just want to show the artist how you can create additional lines starting with the 14 line grid. So I just drop those two at that point. I can now do the same on the bottom. I can drop a diagonal line in this corner here where those verticals that I just drew. Then I can branch it over here in the same fashion like I did on the top. And then I can do the same thing here. I can drop a diagonal line here, meet it at this vertical, bring it to this corner, and then I can do the same thing over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate the black lines so that you can see what I just did. So let me do that. Make it a little bit easier to read. And I'm going to eliminate those verticals that I used to create that. And like I said, I'm not going to do exactly what he has in the book because I don't want to drive my viewers to drink heavily. But let me just eliminate these lines. And this is the original vertical. So what you see here is part of what below is showing, but I've created a new series of diagonal lines that 
don't follow the original armature outside of these two in the center. And what you would do is you would reverse those on the bottom, for example, like with the center line. I shouldn't have eliminated this, but let me just bring it back here. I can drop this like this. And I can work within this new grid to create a new design. And let me just eliminate that now. So now I have an entirely new grid. However, it's derived from the original 14 line armature. And that's why this is important. My point is today, and this is why I don't generally lock myself into one ideology. And I, this is also why I've mentioned in the past why I don't follow Myron Barnstone's methods of analyzing art, I just don't find them accurate in that sense because you can't apply dynamic symmetry to everything. And showing this from Boulot's book, I now have a brand new grid with additional diagonal lines that don't really represent the original 14 line grid. And this is how versatile this is. So I don't expect this to make too much sense today, but I just, like I said, I want to point out of how much you can do with this design grid, but always start with the basic 14 line armature. That's going to be it. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it as always.